Ladies and gentlemen, this regular board meeting of the Carrollton Farmers Branch ISD Board of Trustees is called to order at 7.05 p.m. on June the 5th, 2014. We thank you all for being here. At this time, I would ask if you please join me in standing as Richard Fleming leads the board's opening prayer and remain standing for Nancy Watton as she leads us in the pledge to the U.S. and the Texas flag. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us another day to come and worship you. Also, please continue to guide our school district, school board members, as well as our superintendent as we bring this year to, to a close. Please continue to bless us in the future. It is a great pleasure that we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee. Texas, one state, one God, one and indivisible. Please be seated. Please allow me uh, to make some opening statements, and then after that we'll move back into our agenda. As a district, we dedicate all of our effort and resources to our goal of high achievement for all of our students. And the board uses this goal <coughs> to guide all deliberation, decisions, and actions. You will get to see all deliberation, decisions, and actions of the board in open session, with the exception of some items in which may be discussed in a closed session, as stipulated in the Texas Government Code Section 551, commonly known as the Open Meetings Law. And these items typically deal with personnel matters, consultation with our attorney in real estate. For the record, all board members are here and we do constitute a quorum and can conduct business on behalf of the school district. Also, as required by our board policy, BBD local, at each meeting of the board, the president shall announce and the minutes shall reflect the name of each board member who has completed the required training, who has, who has exceeded the required hours of training, and who is deficient in the required training as of the date of the meeting before any vote of the board is taken. Let the minutes reflect at this time that all members of the Carrollton Farmers Branch ISD Board of Trustees have completed and exceeded the annual requirements for school board member continuing education for the 2013-2014 school year. That being said, we will <coughs> move on to agenda item two, Dr. Burns. Thank you, Mr. Good. Uh, agenda item two deals with our recent election. So I will take over the uh, presiding of the meeting for a short time here before I hand it back over to board members. But uh, item two is to consider all matters related to the May 10th, 2014 election of members of the Board of Trustees for Carrollton Farmers Branch, including swearing in. And at this time, I'll ask Ms. Klein and Mr. Good to come down front. And I'll read you a little bit about the uh, this process and then we will swear them in. <laughs> Having run unopposed in, May, in the May 10th, 2014 board election, incumbent Nancy Klein was re-elected to place two. Incumbent James Good was re-elected to place one, having received 55% of the votes cast in that race. Each newly elected individual has been issued their certificate of election and have completed their statement of officer. And at this time, Notary Republic, Notary Public, Ms. Sharon Scrivener, will administer the oath of office to Mr. Good and Ms. Klein. Ms. Scrivener. Okay. You raise your right hand, please. Aye, state your name. Aye, James Aye, Good. Klein. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly Do affirm. Swear or affirm. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of school board trustee. Of school board trustee. For the Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District. For the Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District. Of the state of Texas. Of the state of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. 
preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and, and defend, defend the Constitution and laws. The Constitution, the Constitution and laws of the United States. Of the United States. And of this this state. And of, and of this, this state. state. So help me God. So, so help, help me God. God. You are so sworn. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay. Okay, back to me. Back to you and then back to me, I think. Okay. <laughs> we, we will now move on to agenda item three, which is recognition of special guests and announcements. Dr. Burns. Thank you, Mr. Good. Uh, Welcome to all of you. We, we love a standing room only crowd. Okay. So thank you for being here tonight. We do have a lot of special recognitions. Um, this is a very special time at our board meeting. Uh, we reserve the right to sometimes need to go out of order to meet people's different schedules. So we are going to uh, go to recognition D on our schedule and that is to recognize um, Miss Nancy Watton and she was going to be recognized by our Masonic Lodge Community Builders Award. And so our members from this Masonic Lodge, would you please come forward? And Miss Watton, would you join us in the front? And these gentlemen are going to read you some really special things about Miss Watton and um, we will have a chance to recognize her when we're finished. Also. Benny, you can like. Sure. Good evening. Is this on? Nope. Good evening. My name's Alan Gravely. I'm here with James A. Smith, Masonic Lodge, Farmers Branch. And uh, just want to take a moment to thank the school board for allowing us to be here tonight and present the Community Builder Award. The Grand Lodge of Texas and local Masonic lodges honor a citizen annually who goes beyond the call of duty in serving their community, a person who has helped bring about changes in building a better community, thereby making it a better place to live. The Community Builder Award was designed to enable a lodge to formally recognize outstanding non-Masons who have distinguished themselves through their service to the community, to local, state, or national entities, to their church or synagogue, or to humanity. <clears throat> Thus the award is to be presented to individuals who, although they have never been initiated into masonry, have followed the same precepts, ideals, and standards that have been established for Masonic behavior. In considering those qualifications, James A. Smith Masonic Lodge number 395 and the Grand Lodge of Texas would like to present this year's award to Miss Nancy Watton, realizing that she exemplifies all of these qualities. We're not the first to recognize her as she has excelled in many organizations in all of her endeavors, such as receiving Carrollton's Jimmy Porter, Jimmy Porter Award in uh, 1996 for supporting youth activities, Farmers Branch Woman of the Year 1997, Carrollton's Parks and Recreation Service Award in 2001, again supporting youth activities. Farmers Branch City Hall of Fame in 2003. Ms. Watton is a PTA Life member and has received two Texas PTA Extended Service Awards. She was named second very important professional in the Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District and also volunteers with Farmers Branch Tour of Lights every Christmas Eve supporting local charities. All this she has done after teaching and mentoring in the Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District for many years, as well as continuing to serve on our board today. It is with great pleasure that we present Miss Nancy Watton the Community Builder Award from James A. Smith Masonic Lodge and the Grand Lodge of Texas for her continuing and outstanding service to our community. Thank you, Miss Watton.
Daddy was a mason. Ella, good job. See you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, no doubt. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, good. We might as well just stay here. Right. Yeah, we'll be back down here anyway. Our next recognition tonight uh, will be a VIP, singular. Uh, we had previously done VIPs during the year, and we do VIPs in uh, MVPs in June. However, this person wasn't able to attend. So we don't want to lose that chance to recognize this person. So we have one single VIP tonight that we're going to recognize. And we use the VIP we talk about as our act of gratitude for all of their hard work and efforts they put in to our classrooms every day. And so tonight from Long Middle School, Mr. Joe Copeland is going to introduce a very important professional. Good evening, Dr. Burns, President Gould, school board members, and guests. I am honored to represent Dan F. Long as their distinguished, highly acclaimed principal. <laughs> <laughs> it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you our newest member to the very important profession of teaching, Erica Cole. Ms. Cole has been with Danif Long for seven years. She is the proud parent of her son Jacob and is married to her fantastic husband Jeff. She's been involved in theater for 20 years, including working professionally for the Theater 3 in Dallas and performing and directing for Denton Community Theater. In collaboration with a fellow teacher, she has created a production company called the Denton Performance Lab. Last summer, they wrote, produced, and performed an original show. In addition to that, she has written a few plays and monologues. Ms. Cole brings all of her professional experience to our campus and our program of theater at Dan F. Long. She is also involved in UIL with her oral reading uh, as an oral reading coach. From 2008 to 13, Dan F. Long students have consistently placed in the top six, with the first place winner for four years. Under her direction, the UIL one-act play has earned third place in 11, 2011, and first place in 2013. Also in 2013, her classes participated in a speech tournament and placed first in prose, duet, and lip sync. In addition to competitions, Ms. Cole produces plays and numerous heartwarming events on our campus throughout the year that showcase our students' creativity. She consistently reminds her students that they all have talent, and with some work, some very hard work and commitment, greatness will follow. Because of her hard work, her students have performed plays such as Romeo and Juliet and The Taming of the Shrew. A few years ago, a student was upset about being placed in the theater arts instead of tech ed. During scheduled pickup, after walking down the hall to her room, he met Ms. Cole, who said, Hi, I'm Ms. Cole. This is theater, and I'm so excited to have you in my class. She explained all the fun things that we're going to do that year and ended with, and we will make sock puppets. And with that sentence, he looked at his parents and said with a huge smile, I'm going to love this class. <laughs> and he did for three years. Erica is also, also the ultimate talent scout. For last year's talent show, not only did she co-direct it with another teacher, she convinced one of her theater students to participate. This cool, quiet, overachieving student stunned everyone when he brought the house down with a smooth serenade while playing a ukulele. <laughs> when he found out that Miss Cole was our VIP, he said, she deserves it because she is so nice, so understanding, extremely creative, and really fun. 
there were multiple times that we didn't meet her expectations from learning our lines and she didn't start screaming or get mad but calmly told us her expectations. She got us to do the work that she's expecting us to do. Unlike most teachers, he said, she understands how to get the respect she deserves but she doesn't rule her class with an iron fist. She's also one of the funniest teachers I've ever met, that's for sure. We all know that the teacher matters and that reading, writing, and arithmetic are critical to the fundamentals of learning. But we tend to overlook and take for granted our developing creativity, confidence, and commitment as we do here in CFB with our fine arts departments. Erica Cole consistently displayed the, displays the leadership and compassion for all students and colleagues, making her one of our brightest stars. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me, help us at Danif Long, please welcome our newest member to the very important profession of teaching, Erica Cole. Distinguished acclaimed principal. <laughs> Distinguished. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Next recognition tonight. We on? It's our MVP program. MVP stands for Making the Vision Possible. And these are what we call our kind of behind the scenes players. They don't directly teach in our classrooms, but nonetheless are critical to our success and critical to us helping us reach our goal of high achievement for our kids. And so they do lots of different jobs in the district. And so tonight we recognize them under our VIP program. But this year is a little different focus. We launched this year with a really strong emphasis on eye care, customer service, both internally and externally. So the people we recognize tonight demonstrated on a consistent basis an eye care attitude and a customer service attitude both internally and externally and that's why they were nominated and that's why they were selected tonight as MVPs. And so at this time each of their supervisors is going to read a little special thing about our MVP. Ms. Webb, I think you're first. And as our MVPs are recognized. We'd like for friends, family, and anybody that's here supporting that MVP, please feel free to stand. And people that are already standing, you can just keep standing. That's okay. <laughs> okay? Uh, Ms. Webb. All right. Um, my name is Kathy Webb, and I'm Chief Officer of Data and Technology, and it's my privilege to present Ann Beltran for recognition as an MVP. joined the CFB team in 2008 as a records clerk at Kent Elementary School. She spent three years at Kent before moving to Blaylock Middle School as a counselor secretary. After a year and a half at Blaylock, Anne joined the CFB Technology Service clerk Desk. Each move was driven by the desire to provide assistance on a larger scale. Having observed Anne in each of these workplaces, it is evident that she is a helper by nature. When she sees a, sees a need, she will try to meet the need. She is always the first to volunteer when help is requested. Anne is reluctant to be in the glare of the spotlight. Her preference is to be a contributing team member behind the scenes. Even so, she is a bright spot to all who come in contact with her and benefit from her caring manner, knowledge, and expertise. In a jovial conversation with Anne, a comment was made about staying out of trouble. Her response brought a moment of quiet reflection. She said, if I were ever to get in trouble on the job, it would probably be for helping too much. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> In closing, I'd like to tell a story about a gradebook fairy. The year after Anne left Kent, I was asked to conduct gradebook refresher training at a, Kent, at a Kent faculty meeting. The first step in setting up a gradebook is to activate each class. It's a simple process, and teachers generally just need to be reminded to do it. Little time is spent on that aspect of the gradebook. However, during this training, it became clear very quickly that the Kent teachers had no idea what I was talking about. There weren't a lot of new teachers, and a new gradebook was not being introduced, and the gradebook process had not changed. 
I was more than a little confused. Later, I uncovered the reason why they had no idea what I was saying. There was a behind-the-scenes work of one Anne Beltran. Mm -hmm. Anne was a grade book fairy. She believed it was important to lend a helping hand in any way that she could, so she went through the process of activating classes for her teachers. To her, it was a small gesture, one of many. To them, it held very great meaning. Anne Beltran is a valued member of the CFB team, and it is my honor to present her as an MVP. Good evening. My name is Brooke Purcelli, and it's my honor to serve as the principal of R.L. Turner High School. This evening, I'm pleased to introduce you to our newest MVP, Mrs. Kathy Burton. <laughs> Kathy has been at R.L. Turner since 1995. She served for four years as a clinic aide before she moved to the main office and became the voice of R.L. Turner. She has served the students, parents, and staff of our school in that role ever since. Whether you're visiting or calling R.L. Turner, chances are the first person you'll talk to is Kathy Burton. During her 20 years as a Turner Lion, Kathy has interacted with literally hundreds of people. As PTSA President Linda Villamoret says, she may be the most important person in the school because as the first point of contact to those coming in, all opinions of the school will be formed at that moment they are greeted. Business teacher Carrie Brown says, she has been a rock star at the front desk. Her mood is always <coughs> positive and she always has a big smile on her face. She is the first point of contact that many of our parents and students see when they visit Turner, and she does a wonderful job of making them feel welcome. Avid teacher Liz Binion says, I often have guests that come into the building, and the first thing they mention is how wonderful Ms. Burton is at welcoming them to RLT. She is truly a wonderful ambassador. Through the district's I Care Customer Service Mystery Shopper program, Kathy Burton was identified as a shining star. They noted, the representative was very enthusiastic, knowledgeable, and engaging, and made us feel very welcome. We were impressed with the representative. This campus has the ability to be a flagship demonstration site for customer service. And that's our Kathy. It doesn't matter whether you're the superintendent or a parent coming to register your student for the first time, Kathy is excited to see you. She wants to know you, assist you, and help you have a great day. Kathy embodies our school motto, Character Counts, and she is truly an MVP. Good evening, I'm Brett Farr, Director of Fine Arts. And it's my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Mrs. Jeannie Hyden, who is the MVP for the Fine Arts Department. <laughs> Two years ago, I had the great privilege of being asked to serve the district as Fine Arts Director. It was with great excitement that I quickly assumed the role just 16 days after I was offered the position. In fact, it was July 16th of 2012 when I walked through the doors of the Fine Arts Office for the first day. And I must admit, in addition to the excitement, there was a great deal of anxiety about the tremendous responsibility of walking into a department that was already functioning at a high level and producing many wonderful programs. To my delight, one of the first people I encountered was Jeannie Hyden. Jeannie, Jeannie, who is no stranger to CFB, after nearly 18 years of service, was so encouraging and insightful that we could have, what could have been a rocky road was made smooth by her deep knowledge and sound advice. At every point of, her, of my concern or confusion, she was there with a knowledge base that provided history, context, and procedure. At no point did she tell me what to do, but at every point she provided the foundation of knowledge that allowed me to make good decisions that ultimately benefited the teachers and the students. Jeannie has a way of cutting through the fluff and getting to the point 
and I knew right away we were going to get along well. <laughs> it is truly amazing to me to listen to her guide our teachers through the intricacies of working with budgets, student travel, teacher travel, capital outlay, instrumental repair, VSRs, substitutes, yellow buses, charter buses, reimbursements. You get the picture. <laughs> As you might imagine, I spent a lot of time that first year praying for Jeannie's good health. <laughs> because I knew if she went down, the whole operation was headed the same way. <laughs> Fortunately for all of us, Jeannie remained healthy. For two years now, Jeannie, along with our team, has labored behind the scenes to keep our department running smoothly and efficiently for the single purpose of creating an environment that paves the way for teacher success and student high achievement. Her contributions to the success of the fine arts and CFB are immeasurable and innumerable. Her legacy here in the fine arts office will not only be her cheerful disposition and distinctive laugh, but also her excellent work, her sense of loyalty, duty, and example. For the past several weeks, Jeannie has been faithfully training Pam Appalucci, who has now taken over the secretarial role. Even in this capacity, her wisdom and advice are crucial and valued by all of us. I suspect even in a few months when Jeannie's lying on the beach somewhere in Florida sipping an iced tea, <laughs> <laughs> that Pam and I will have her on speed dial. Personally, I consider Jeannie as a mentor, a colleague, and a friend, and I can tell you without reservation that all of us will miss her positive and gentle spirit and her distinctive laugh that made each day a little better. I recently learned that both Jeannie and her husband Bruce are black belts in Taekwondo. It may be that Jeannie will do some moonlighting as a bodyguard during her retirement. <laughs> and if anyone in the room needs such services, you can contact Jeannie after the meeting. <laughs> Jeannie, on behalf of myself and, and Pam and Dawn and 154 appreciative fine arts faculty, thank you for making the visit possible. Good evening. My name is Steve Franks and I'm the accounting director for the district. Tonight I have the honor of introducing MVP recipient Jennifer Nix. <laughs> Jennifer started with the district in May 2012. Last month she completed her second year. She has been a very welcome addition to the business office, bringing with her 20 years of business experience working for both public and private companies. Jennifer is a graduate of Texas A&M University with a, with a degree <laughs> in applied mathematical sciences. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, uh, Jennifer's husband, Kelly, is here tonight. Her family also includes her daughter, Emily, who is a who is a senior at UNT, and stepdaughters Chelsea and Melissa, who is a senior at UT Tyler. Jennifer's hobbies include spending time with her three grandchildren and taking care of her 90-pound German Shepherd named Bo. <laughs> because of her extensive business background, Jennifer was able to learn the district's financial software with ease and transition very quickly to the school finance environment. However, it was apparent from the beginning that Jennifer's gift was her passion for helping people. The first recognition that Jennifer received was from two principals who, in spite of their busy schedule, took the time to let me know how appreciative they were for Jennifer's help and the outstanding customer service that she provided their campuses. The recognition of Jennifer's excellent customer service skills continued. Recently, a library services employee sent an email stating, and I quote, Jennifer is an outstanding employee. She is so patient, knowledgeable, and super helpful. Another employee sent an email stating, and I quote, I wanted to let you know what a jewel Jennifer has been this past year. She handles our accounts with such professionalism and kindness. We are so fortunate to have such an outstanding 
such an outstanding employee that has already made a significant contribution to the business office and the district. We affectionately consider her our Johnny Football. <laughs> uh, please join me in con congratulating our newest MVP, Jennifer Nix. Good evening, members of the board. I'm here tonight to recognize Seek Pond for his work in helping to make division possible. noticed how most people don't like the word no? It starts with birth and with time only gets worse. Luckily, Mr. Seekpon never uses the word no. Taking the district's objectives of improving the learning environment and improving community support to heart, he finds ways that he can do for others. Miss Pond, he doesn't tell you no, does he? <laughs> I've had the privilege of knowing and working with Mr. Pond for approximately 20 years. When we first met, we worked together at McCamey Elementary, where he was the head custodian. I was the new kid on the block, and I quickly found people I could rely on. Mr. Pond was one of those. He kept the building looking immaculate at all times, and his infectious laugh and impeccable manners made him an instant MVP. In fact, he was so well-loved that the school had a Mr. Pond Day to celebrate his commitment to the McCamey Trailblazers. Those in the district know of Mr. Pond's extraordinary work ethic, his commitment to excellence, and his indomitable spirit. However, what few of you know is how he got here. A survivor of the killing fields in Cambodia, Mr. Pond left behind members of his own family to leave a country that he loved that was ruled by a dictator he despised. I vividly remember the day that he told me the story of his journey and it literally brought tears to my eyes. And I still can't imagine anyone living through such horrific times. Yet he did, and here he is, raising his children in CFB, watching them reach their full potential. He even shared his son with the students at McLaughlin Strickland while I was there through the After the Bell program. Currently, Mr. Pond serves the district as the key man. And this is so fitting. He unlocks the doors to our schools, opens communication to the public, and is the key to helping to make the vision possible. Dr. Burns and members of the board. I am Rebecca McDowell, Director of Payroll. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the newest member of the MVP family, Becky Sanchez. <laughs> Becky had a unique beginning with CFB as she is one of our student success stories. Becky graduated from R.L. Turner after completing all 12 years with CFB. She began in the payroll department as a student where she participated in the organization Business Partnerships in Education. She remained working as a VOE student in the payroll department until graduation where she joined the payroll team as a full-time team member. Becky currently has 18 years of service with CFB. And CFB is a big part of Becky's family. Her son Noah will be entering the fifth grade at Rosemead Elementary. Her sister, who's here tonight, works in purchasing. Her dad works in the distribution center. And her mom is here also tonight. 
Becky currently serves as the payroll specialist where one of her major responsibilities is to make sure over 500 employees receive their paycheck timely and accurately each month. Mm -hmm. This year we had three bad weather days and many of our employees were so excited as it meant no school. As Becky can attest, when you work in payroll, you have the same deadlines whether you have good weather or bad weather. <laughs> And so even with those three bad weather days, our employees were paid accurately and on time. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> Working in payroll, Becky is part of a team that is continually recognized for providing exceptional customer service on many levels. Becky dis Becky's positive approach to customer service makes her an important member of that team. She greets every person that enters the payroll department with willingness to help and a winning smile. Her ability to be knowledgeable and responsive gives the customers a feeling of confidence in our services. And her helpful and courteous attitude work well to shift sometimes stressful interactions into positive experiences for her customers. Becky is a winning combination of all the best traits needed to provide outstanding customer service in our payroll department. Clearly, Becky is a first-class provider of great customer service. One of our employees shared this with me. We know the heavy workload she must have, but she always has time for each individual district member as if we were the only ones that mattered. And she does it with a smile and demonstrates a great interest in our well-being. A department administrator said, the mark of any great player is one that makes spectacular plays and makes them look routine. <laughs> Becky, congratulations on this very well-deserved recognition. Your dedication contributes to the success of the payroll department. Dr. Burns, Mr. Good, I have the pleasure tonight of, uh, of recognizing my right hand, Ms. Mary Shaddix. <clears throat> As we launch into the beginning of the NBA Finals, those of us that follow basketball will hear a lot about the value of point guard play. The point guard is the catalyst that makes all other things click. The point guard gets everyone else in position to score the ball and to perform at a high level. We have our own point guard in Mary. You have probably heard some people say some things kind of tongue in cheek that say, here, let me stop what I'm doing while I solve your problem. <laughs> this is the epitome of Mary's every day. Stopping what she's doing, accepting the inter interruption to help someone else through this process, Mary has been maestro, matriarch, and madre to hundreds of people coming through the service center. Mm -hmm. Mary does possess a storehouse of knowledge, and yes, she is dependable, hardworking, all those attributes you'd look for in a fine individual. But one thing, that one trait that I would like to spotlight this evening is Christine Kane says, God is looking for our obedience far more than our opinion. This trait is what sets Mary apart. If you have experienced what it is like to have a prayer warrior in your corner that pray for your family through tough times or cloak you with a hedge of protection when in travel, then you know what, how special people like Mary are. I have been the benefactor of just such dedication for 14 years since I came to the district. I have been very glad to be able to present to a board that identifies with such benefits of prayer, performance, and petition. Ladies and gentlemen, in her 25th year from the service center, Five foot maybe, MVP point guard, Mary Shaddix. Good evening, Dr. Burns, Mr. Good, and members of the board. I'm Trini Garza, Director of the Human Resources and Benefits Department. This evening, it gives me great pleasure to recognize Susan Stevens as our MVP.
Susan has 16 years of experience with the district. She came to Human Resources by way of Central Elementary, where she worked as, as a bilingual aide for three years. Since that time, Susan has served as the Substitute Management Secretary, as well as Secretary to the Executive Director. Three years ago, when we recognized the need to reorganize our department, Susan was asked to serve as Secretary, not to one, but to two directors. Susan gracious, graciously accepted that challenge. I know she was a little nervous about that, but, she, but she, she came through. I knew that Susan was up to the challenge because of the strong skills that she has developed since her tenure in the department. Her two supervisors describe her as someone who can multitask well, is focused and detailed. They also commented that she takes a proactive approach and looks for consistency in her tasks, which is an important trait to have in human resources. Susan has always exhibited the I Care Customer Service Initiative in CFB. Just ask her teammates and those who she comes in contact with daily. She smiles a lot, acknowledges those in her presence, and does all she can to meet the needs of others. Susan's husband could not be here tonight as he works out of town, but her sister Marie is here, and, and Susan has two children at home, a five-year-old Lauren and two-year-old Sammy. So after she works with us, she goes home and she works again. <laughs> Susan is dedicated to her family as well as to her family at work. We are very fortunate to have her as a team member and a Make the Vision Possible recipient. Good evening. I'm Michelle Bailey, Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Schools, and I'm here to recognize someone that I don't think he knows that I nominated him. Um, professional, friendly, helpful, courteous, and the epitome of customer service. These are words that were repeated over and over when I asked colleagues for a description of Jamal Thomas. On many occasions, I have needed to enter my building after hours. I would call security to inform them of my entry. Nine times out of ten, Jamal would be on the other end of the line. I could see his smile and it, through the phone when he would respond, Hello, Ms. Bailey, how can I help you? My response would always be, I'm just letting you know I'm going in the building. Well, a couple of Sundays ago, I had to enter my building. I thought I could get in and get out. No makeup, hair up in, you know. <laughs> of course, I had a problem. I could not get the alarm to go off. So I called security again. Jamal came. He came to the building, stopped the alarm, gave me a lesson for disarming the system again. <laughs> he was very patient and understanding, and I'm sure thinking, now how long has she worked here? <laughs> <laughs> so in, when I started thinking about this, I called Pat Hester to uh, get some feedback on Jamal, and he told me that Jamal takes his job very seriously and is willing to go the extra mile to help others. He said, guess what? I just received an email praising Jamal so I want to give you an excerpt from the email and it read I just wanted to let you know of the experience I had Wednesday with Jamal Thomas after leaving work and running errands I realized I left the keys to my house in my office I called the number for CFB security and Jamal answered I explained the situation to him and he was patient and listening to my dramatic tale about and he was just so nice about it he said that if I would call him when I was about 15 minutes away, he would meet me at the building. Lo and behold, when I drove into the parking lot, Jamal drove in right after me. He greeted me with a smile and said, glad to help you. I thanked him and he said he hoped I'd have a good evening and was just over the top professional and kind. Despite my causing an inconvenience to him to have to come to the building to let me in, he acted as though it was his pleasure to help me out. His willingness to stop and help me stood out to me. 
You just don't encounter that type of cheerful, service-oriented <coughs> attitude every day. He's a great asset to the district, and it is with great pride that we honor Jamal Thomas as an MVP. <laughs> I'm experiencing of a bit of a chest cold, so I told Brad, whatever you do, don't make me laugh or I'll start coughing. And just before I came up, he leaned over and said, what, I don't get any flowers? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Goode, Dr. Burns, members of the board, it is truly an honor to recognize our plant operations MVP, Mr. Brad White. <laughs> Brad is not only a longtime employee, but he is a homegrown product of CFB. Brad began his career at Sheffield Primary as a five-year-old and graduated from Turner High School in 2000. <laughs> that summer after graduation, Brad began working for CFB in the lawn department and eventually worked his way up to stadium manager and then as a supervisor of our revered rover team and plan operations. Brad has many great qualities, but the best way I can describe him is with one word, dependable. Many different types of emergencies come up every day at one of our 51 buildings, and Brad is always ready to solve the problem. Whether organizing his team or leading the Congo line at his children's school to achy, breaky heart, <laughs> he is loyal to his district and to his co-workers. One of the things I admire most about Brad is that he is a true family man. He is married to Misty, they have three boys, and I love to hear him talk about them with great pride and enthusiasm. Brad is a great asset to our team, he shows great leadership, and he really loves his job. The fact of the matter is that Brad just takes care of business. You do not have to ask twice you can just consider it done the first time. Let me also say, he grills one of the best steaks you've ever eaten in your life. <laughs> when I think of what Brad represents, I think of the great quote, it is amazing how much you can accomplish when it just doesn't matter who gets the credit. And the quote from the great Michael Jordan that talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence win championships. Ladies and gentlemen, I present our MVP, Mr. Brad White. That concludes our MVP recognition. Our next recognition tonight, <coughs> the University Council for <coughs> Educational Administration is here with us tonight to recognize and honor Ms. Susan Machayo as the UCA Excellence in Educational Leadership Award recipient. One of our former CFB principals, Newman Smith High School, Dr. Lee Alvoid, is here to present the award along with Dr. Gail Harton, I believe. Are you presenting? And Dr. Les Black, you brought back everybody you could find from... <laughs> <laughs> Please come up and uh, present the award to Ms. Machado. Good evening. 
the hallmark of a great leader is one who develops those around them. Um, the UCA award is a national award that SMU's uh, Department of Education Policy and Leadership was able to nominate Ms. Machado for because of her work with our aspiring school leaders. Uh, she has mentored or is getting ready to mentor the fifth of our graduates of our program and we only started the program in 2009. She has mentored two uh, students as they went through their rather arduous internship which is very different from a traditional program. Uh, she mentored two of our students as summer school principal and um, her current assistant principal is a graduate of our program and she has a new student starting in our program this year. The University Council of Educational Administration is the research arm of those of us who now, even though we all have career ties to CFB, who now study the development of aspiring school leaders and the organizations that they serve. Um, it is our research arm and so for a year Ms. Machado will receive all of our journals and all of the publications from that organization. She will be enshrined in the publications um, as the winner of this national award um, and uh, the, it's actually international in some ways because we extend to parts of Europe and Canada. There are three of the values of UCEA that we think Susan um, represents. Of course the most prominent one is the development of aspiring school leaders, that she contributes greatly to that. The other two are unique to the kind of school culture that she creates at Farmers Branch Elementary. Uh, one is that it's um, high expectations for all students and that all students achieve um, with uh, no excuses. Um, the other is a belief that the organization has about our responsibility as school leaders to promote social justice, equity, and to celebrate diversity. And I believe Farmers Branch Elementary is a great example of a culture that celebrates diversity as an outreach to the community and that um, aspires for social justice. So we are very honored tonight to present this award to her. It is a, a big national award and lots of her staff is here and we're very proud of uh, Susan's work with our program and with uh, promoting great leadership for the future of our schools. So thank you. Tonight, on behalf of Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District Board of Trustees, it is our honor to recognize Essilor Vision Foundation for their involvement in our partnership and education program. We are thankful to have a relationship with Essilor. Their constant outreach is an example of what is possible when a public school and a community of caring individuals work together to be partners in the education and welfare of our students. Our partnership with the Essler Vision Foundation started five years ago when Essler adopted the Central Elementary Campus. Essler and their volunteers provided vision screening to all Central Elementary students and then returned with their vision van and an optometrist to prescribe and make glasses for the students in need. Essler saw the impact and provided vision screening to five more campuses and then progressed to ten campuses. This year, Essler served every elementary campus in CFB ISD. Their volunteers provided vision screening and eyeglasses for every student in need. Essler Vision Foundation provided approximately 1,000 pair of glasses to our elementary students. This service has changed the lives of so many students. One teacher told the story of a student who had to tape and glue her glasses together because the arm had broken off. The glasses were old and the prescription was no longer what she needed. She squinted constantly and would often tell her teacher that she couldn't read her books or her work. 
Hessler changed the student's ability to learn by giving her a new pair of glasses to fit her needs. She was so excited when she got her glasses. Her classwork improved, she participated more in class, and she loves to read. Children need to be able to see to learn efficiently in the classroom. Thanks to Essler Vision Foundation, there are 1,000 other students who have experienced this change in their learning lives. Students, parents, and teachers are grateful for the impact of the Vision Program. On behalf of the Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District, Board of Trustees, with James Good, President Officiating, and Dr. Bobby Burns, Superintendent Presenting, it is our privilege to present this plaque to Essler Vision Foundation. Essler has truly exemplified a meaningful partnership between our community and our students. Accepting this plaque is Denise Levy and Jason Deemer from Essler Vision Foundation. better each year we have a, an annual run called Casey's run to benefit Special Olympics but also to continue a legacy of a very special student that we had in our district and uh, you know you heard earlier the many stories of our MVPs our VIPs and then many of those were students in our district and we think that has a lot to do with how we treat kids to come back and work in this school district and continue that that attitude and that passion for their work. Uh, Casey was one of those rare kids who exemplified that even in high school, carried that on, and unfortunately, uh, some of you know the story. And so we are honored every year to get to do this, and we are graced by the presence of her mother and father, Mel and Candy Breckus. Would you please come forward? And I, and I believe... Someone has a special recognition and a check to present. You can go everywhere, anywhere you like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Burns, Mr. Good, and members of the school board. Good evening. My name is Mary LaCroix. I'm a senior at Ranchu High School and one of the 18 student coordinators for Casey's Run, benefiting CFBISD All-Star Special Olympics. I'm honored to stand before you tonight to celebrate the success of Casey's Run 2014. Casey's Run is a charitable 5K and 1 mile family fun run held every spring in Carrollton Farmers Branch ISD. Our mission is to create an opportunity for the CFBISD community, its students and staff, to experience our CFBISD All-Star Special Olympics athletes through their involvement as volunteers, sponsors, and participants. Our event promotes acceptance, encouragement, and empowerment through service to others. We honor the legacy of service of Casey Bruckus. An epic evolution of service to others, Casey's Run tells the story of a student who was empowered to lead, whose tragic death inspires, inspired others to give of themselves, and whose legacy continues on today. Lenora Blackiston once wrote, Out of such pure and simple beginnings grow great and wonderful things. The Turner Torch Run began in 1999 with the charge of empowering students to embrace volunteerism and raise funds for the local Special Olympics team. Fifteen years later, that same charge of service to others is the beating heart of Casey's Run. As my fellow student coordinators stand before you, we join an ever-growing family of students whose lives are enriched by the opportunity to give of ourselves, our time, and talents to our All-Stars. What has grown out of one school 
to now include 43 schools. We stand and represent hundreds of students who dug deep in their pockets to find change for the coin drive, countless teachers who paid to wear jeans to school, and even more friends of our all-stars who participated on race day. We represent the campus liaisons who, who lead their schools in Casey's Run campaigns, the Casey's Kids volunteers who worked with us, the Casey's Run committee whose dedication is unwavering, and the family of Casey Breckis, whose compassion, generosity, and love continues to endow the realization of our mission. Accepting this check are representatives of the, of the CFB ISD All-Star Special Olympics team, our classmates and friends who are the beneficiaries of Casey's Run and the inspiration for our work as volunteers. <coughs> because of Casey's Run, our All-Stars are annually awarded letter jackets for their athletic endeavors. They earn patches and are uniformed to represent our district team. Their transportation and participation comes at no cost to them. As we hear stories, see pictures, and watch videos of their competitions, we recognize the way each athlete embodies the Special Olympics oath. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. This year, we chose to be brave with them. On behalf of all those whose contributions made this possible, we present our All-Stars with a check in the amount of $30,000. If you haven't been to Casey's Run, we would encourage you to make the commitment now. You can start training now. Okay, start training now. Just baby steps. You can get there. Uh, Mr. Shore and I had a little race last time, and you know, luckily he tripped. Able to win. Not but, on drugs. <laughs> so, but it really is a great day for a great cause, and we, of course, every year finish with this ceremony. But uh, once you go to one Casey's Run, you will always go to one. I think. All right, thank you. Mr. Good, that concludes our recognition. <laughs> On behalf of the school board, this is our time to be able to say thank you to so many people that impact the lives of our students. And I think what you've observed and experienced this evening is the diversity of the impact and the influence of so many people on our students. And so many times we try to just say, it only takes a teacher. But when you look at those individuals who have been recognized this evening, <coughs> it truly takes the entire village. It takes the entire school district to truly impact the lives of all of our students. And, I, and it's my opportunity to be able to say thank you to our VIPs who have direct contact with the students, to our MVPs, who provide the services that assist the educators in, in truly impacting all of our students. And then you can see our businesses such as Essilor who have a direct impact upon the students. It's such a wonderful 
opportunity to be able to say how a business can impact a thousand students and all they did was just determine that they had the proper vision to be able to learn it is truly thankful that we can say that to SLR and especially on Casey's run over the years we've all experienced it in one way or another as myself I walk I don't run <laughs> And they'll let you walk as long as you want to. <laughs> but it, it is wonderful how one individual was, has impacted Special Olympics. And after all these many years, it's continuing to grow and involve more and more of our students throughout our, our school district. So on behalf of the board, thank you to all of our recognized guests this evening. It is truly an honor for us to, in a small way, to be able to say thank you for the true impact that you have had on all of our students. And with that being said, I have to look. we will take a brief recess to allow many of you who probably do not want to spend the rest of the evening with us, and we'll take a 10-minute recess, and then we will reconvene at 8.20 p.m. Thank you. This meeting is reconvened at 8.20 p.m. Next is agenda item for board reorganization. At this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Burns to conduct the board reorganization for us. Thank you, Mr. Good. Uh, members of the board and, and for our audience, uh, annually, uh, this board has outlined in their uh, standards of professional practice that they will reorganize annually for the officer positions uh, that serve in the uh, for the board and so I will handle the first selection which is the office of president by opening the floor from our board members for nominations to the position of president for the board of trustees M mr. Matthews I don't know if this would be <clears throat> appropriate but could I make a motion and if it's not appropriate then just a nomination. Have, have you made a nomination yet? <laughs> huh? are, are you nominating and then you want to make a nominate the current slate of officers as a whole to serve one more year? Um, is that but, the, okay, but whoever is the next president will let them preside over that and then y'all can okay. decide if you want to do that at home or not. James Goode okay. as president. Are, are there any other nominations? I don't think you do it that, that way. We don't need to do that uh, under the ru Robert Rules of Order. Yeah, we eventually. we do not need another nomination. We only need a motion. Correct? No, we just vote on it. Vote on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so much for those Robert's Rules of Order. So, no, 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 so much for you not knowing <laughs> Robert's Rules of Order. <laughs> so, all right. So we will now vote for Mr. James Good as the officer of president. All those in favor? Please raise your right hand. That no, vote is four. that vote is unanimous. Mr. Good, I will now turn it over to you Thank so you goodness. can handle <laughs> the rest of this. Okay. With that, we'll move on to the office of vice president. The floor is open for nominations for the position of vice president. Yes, ma'am. I nominate Frank Shore. What? Any other nominations? No, you don't do it that way. <laughs> Hearing none, seeing none. <laughs> I mean, maybe we need. You just vote on answer. the name that's nominated. No. If that person gets four, you go to the next position. I learned that at N T A A S B. So okay. it must be right. <laughs> I think, Rob, okay. <laughs> We're not going to argue over Robert Hood. <laughs> With that, Frank Shore for Vice President. Frank Shore. Please raise your hand for Frank Shore as uh, Vice President. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Mr. Shore, thank you. 
With that, we'll move on to the position of board secretary. The floor is open for nominations for board secretary. Ms. Klein. I nominate Nancy Watton. Nancy Watton has been nominated for board secretary. All those uh, voting for her, please signify by raising your hand. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. With that, Mr. Short. I nominate the next person. <laughs> the next person is Assistant Secretary. The floor is now open for nominations. Mr. Richard, Short. Richard Fleming. Uh, and I'd like to nominate. You can't. Randy we Shack. have to vote on you first. Those voting for Mr. Fleming as Board Secretary, Assistant Secretary, please raise your hand. How many hands did I see? One, <laughs> no, two, three, four. Yeah, you, you didn't. You're done. That's You're the majority. You, gotcha. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> With that. Before we move on to agenda item five, which is report by uh, the superintendent, when we move on, to uh, agenda item six, our first order of business, audience for guests. An audience for guests is a mechanism whereby we receive information from the audience regarding whatever topics pertinent to public education that they'd like to speak on. If you would like to speak to the board, you will be given three minutes to speak to the board. There is a form outside the double doors you need to fill out and give to Ms. Scribner. And with that, we will now move on to agenda item five, report by Superintendent <coughs> Dr. Burns. Thank you, Mr. Good. Members of the board, uh, as you know, this is our annual presentation regarding our fine arts and athletics um, programs in CFB. But before I introduce that and give it over to Ms. Warnock to do that, uh, I do want to take this opportunity that, you know, this Saturday, uh, we'll graduate about a little over 1,700 students, and I would be safe to say that many of them benefited from our fine arts and athletics program and our programs were instrumental I think in helping them complete this journey and so as we celebrate that graduation on Saturday uh, we have a lot of people out here in the audience to thank for helping those students cross that milestone so thank you coaches fine arts directors all our music teachers everybody we appreciate all your efforts in in helping us reach high achievement for all our kids Ms. Warnock Thank you, Dr. Burns. Mr. Good, members of the board, it's absolutely my pleasure to get to introduce the student achievement presentation this evening. You know, James Comer said that no significant learning occurs without a significant relationship. And that's one thing that I think when I look out and the people in the audience is their ability and capacity to build relationships with students, to inspire them, and to spur them on to high achievement. You know, our goal is high achievement for all students, and that's in academics, in arts, and athletics. So at this time to celebrate the achievements and to tell you a little bit more about our athletic and arts programs, I'll turn it over to Mr. Brett Farr, Director of Fine Arts, and then uh, after his presentation to Ms. Renee Putter, Director of Athletics. Good evening, Dr. Burns and Mr. Good and members of the board. It's my distinct privilege to stand before you this evening representing the Fine Arts Department for the Carrollton Farms Branch ISD. As my second year concludes as Director of Fine Arts, I remain overwhelmed with the extraordinary talent of both our students and our teachers. From day one, it's been our desire to aim higher in our efforts to educate our students in the area of fine art. I would be remiss if I did not praise the work of my staff in the Fine Arts Office. Their tireless efforts have facilitated the incredible work and success attained by our Fine Arts program. First, again, I would like to and stand up this time. I'd like to recognize Don Valentine, Coordinator of Fine Arts. I don't, is Jeannie still here? Jeannie Hyden? Jeannie, would you stand? Jeannie? Of course, you know she's retiring. And Pam Abelucci is our new Fine Arts Secretary. And then I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Kathy Jackson, who's our new Fine Arts Clerk. Thank you. 
And finally, although several of our teachers had to leave and spoke to me a while ago, finally I'd like to recognize those that were able to stay, our faculty who've done such a wonderful job educating our children and making fine arts special in this district. Would our fine arts teachers stand? Dr. Burns, Mr. Good, members of the board. Physical fitness creates intellectual activity. It is my pleasure tonight to present to you the year in review for athletics. I would like to recognize some of our coaches that are here as well as our coaches of the year that are present. I know all 199 of our coaches would like to be here but I don't think we could have enough space in the room so that's a good thing so uh, I'd like to introduce our middle school athletic coordinators and if they'll stand so I can introduce them from Vivian Field we have James Otto from Bush Middle School we have Eric Costa from Long Middle School we have Frank Lightfoot from Blaylock Middle School we have Tucker West from DeWitt Perry Middle School we have Caleb Noel and our newest athletic coordinator joining us uh, the last month, and that is Jack Holt, and he's from Polk Middle School. <laughs> from our high schools, if our, all of our athletic coordinators would stand. From Arl Turner High School, we have Michael Ramirez and Jennifer, Ham uh, Jennifer Hamlin. From Newman Smith High School, we have Paul Ressa and Christine Gregory. From Creekview High School, we have Jay Klein and Angel Motter. And from Ranchview High School, we have Terry Smith. <laughs> I would love to introduce to you our Coach of the Year. And we have it at the district level, the regional level, and then a very special one at the end that I'll, I'll keep to a secret. So from the district and regional level, first time that this has been a nomination and awarded was to an assistant coach and that is Sean Kitchens assistant wrestling coach from Creekview High School <laughs> a district and regional head wrestling coach from Creekview High School Clay Goodlow A District Coach of the Year for Baseball from Creekview, Stacy Largent. <laughs> from Newman Smith and Ranch View, we have District and Regional Coach John Cleveland for swimming. <laughs> and we have a State Coach of the Year, our dive coach, CFB dive coach Eric Ognaby. thank uh, Renee Putter and Brett Farr for their outstanding leadership of our arts and athletics program as well as all of the coaches sitting here in the audience you are the ones in the trenches who make the work happen for our students every day for our fine arts uh, teachers who are here leading fantastic programs we thank you Dr. Burns that concludes our program yes uh, Mr. Good members of the board you know a lot of districts refer to it as extracurricular activities we like to refer to it as essential curricular activities Board members, any questions or comments? Just praise. <laughs> okay, very good. Hearing none, seeing none, we will. Thank you all for being here, and uh, you're more than welcome to stay, please. <laughs> We're going to move on to the next agenda item at this time. Agenda item 6, which is board operations, and agenda item 6A is audience for guests. As previously stated, this is our opportunity to hear from our community members. Ms. Scrivener, are there any audience for guests? No, sir, there are not. Thank you. And with that, we will move on to agenda item 6B, the consent agenda. 
The consent agenda is a mechanism that the board uses to prove a number of routine items together with a single vote. This is in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. The public notice for this meeting includes the list of all consent agenda items and the board has been provided ample information about these items. Prior to any action taken on the consent agenda, board members will have the opportunity to request withdrawal of individual items for clarification and discussion. Board members, regarding the consent agenda, are there any items you would like to remove from the consent agenda? Mr. Good, uh, yes. we'd like to pull item 16, which is the discussion of bonds. Okay, very good. Are there any other items? Board members, do I have a motion? Mr. Shore. Move that we approve the consent agenda with the exception of item 16. Do I have a second? Yes, one. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of accepting the consent agenda, please signify by raising your hand. That is unanimous. Agenda item 6B16 which is consider all matters incident related to the issuance and sale of Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District unlimited tax refunding bonds, series 2014, <coughs> including the adoption of an order authorizing the issuance of such bonds, establishing parameters for the sale and issuance of such bonds, and delegating certain matters to authorize officials of the district. Mr. Shackman. Let me go ahead and pass that to Mr. Hyatt to give us some background, please. Thank you, okay. Mr. Good. And, uh, Mr. Shackman had asked me earlier, and we discussed earlier, uh, that uh, this item is relatively routine as far as a business transaction, but of a somewhat significance in that it's a positive financial uh, transaction of the district. And with finances and funds being as tight as they are in school finance, anything we can do as a district uh, to enhance our financial position, I think, is worth note. If, uh, in that. That being said, I've asked Ms. Tillman to give you a brief <laughs> overview of what this bonds refunding is all about. Tanya? Thank you. This is a standard refunding for the purpose of yielding a savings in terms of future bond payments by the district. We're requesting that we refund our 2004 bond series, which was actually an advanced refunding of our series 95 and 97 bonds. We're asking the board to delegate pricing authority to Dr. Burns and Mr. Hyatt, whereby if certain parameters are met, these pricing officers will be able to act on behalf of the board and take appropriate action. This gives us flexibility to sell the bonds at the most prime time in terms of market conditions. Under the current market conditions, this refunding would generate just over $550,000 in actual savings over the next three years in future debt service payments. The parameters are outlined in the bond order. Just in summary, what you're delegating is for the superintendent and associate superintendent to have the authority to issue the bonds. Minimum savings threshold would be 3% present value savings. Maximum principal amount is $11,070,000. The final maturity date of the new bonds, the 2014 series, would not exceed February 15, 2017, which is the same term of the bonds that we're refunding. The maturity that's left on them ends in 2017, so we're not extending the debt beyond what we currently have outstanding with the old issue. And the authority only lasts 180 days, so if the market conditions or we do not take action that meet these orders, then it would expire at that time. Okay. Just as a very brief follow-up, for the general public, this is essentially just like refinancing your house. As interest rates fall and you have an opportunity to refinance, restructure your debt at a lower interest rates, that you achieve some savings. In this case, in the big scheme of our district's debt, it's a relatively small refunding, but that relatively small refunding will generate close to a half a million dollars in, in debt service payments over the next couple of years. I just wanted to take the chance to say that and also to point out that Ms. Tillman has been, spent significant time looking at this particular refunding because as the rates have been relatively low but stable and low, the opportunities aren't as, as as obvious as they as they once were and uh, because of her work she's been able to identify these particular bonds and 
actually delay another refunding, not because we couldn't have saved a little bit of money, but the, there's a much better opportunity if we wait for one year on the second. And her extra work in analyzing that I think is very beneficial to the district, and she deserves a lot of credit. And, and so uh, what the public needs to hear is that you all have worked hard, and as the board, as we've looked at the numbers, we're saving over a half million dollars and not extending the time of debt. Absolutely. And, and you know, we, we overlook it sometimes because we struggle so much with school finance, and we're kind of locked into a lot of things that the state kind of just forces into a small uh, area that those things that we can adjust, we do. And because of this because of this refunding as well as some improved uh, local values, the, our district's tax rate is going to be lower next year than it's been in how long? Since 1993. So our, li literally the tax rate combined debt service and operations will be the lowest tax rate this district's had since 1993. To, to put this in a nutshell, aren't we refinancing some debt? We are. Okay. And by refinancing it, we're going to be saving to the tune of half a million dollars. Correct. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Find some more debt to refinance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Good, if there are no other questions, Ms. Tillman, thank you for your work on this. Mr. Hyatt, please pass uh, the board's appreciation to staff. It helps us save money because we want to be more efficient with money every day. I'd like to make a motion then, if that's appropriate, Mr. Good. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, I move to adopt the order authorizing the issuance of Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District Unlimited Tax Refunding Bonds, Series uh, 2014, establishing parameters for the sale and issuance of such bonds and delegating certain matters to authorized officials of the district. Very good. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Shackman. Do I have a second? Ms. Klein. I would second that motion. Thank you very much. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor of approving agenda item 6B16, please signify by raising your hand. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. With that, we'll move on to agenda item 7A, which is comments from board members regarding posted agenda items. Board members, any comments regarding posted agenda items? Mr. Short. Mr. Good, earlier we had a um, agenda item on reorganization of the board. And during that process, uh, I made some remarks that brought smiles to some people's faces. And anytime I can do that, I'm happy to do that. Um, but I do want to say something with sincere conviction Okay, that I would have been comfortable with any board member here serving in any of those four positions. Uh, that's why if it happened quickly, I wasn't being cavalier about it. Okay, uh, I have the trust and confidence in the six of you that any of you could have filled any position very capably and would have done a great job for the board. Very good. Any other comments? And the district. Okay, thank you. Other comments? Hearing none, seeing none. Agenda items eight, closed meeting. Do, Dr. Burns, do we have any business for closed session? That's good. We have no items for closed session this evening. Board members, you know what that means. We have now. See you Saturday. Agenda item nine, we will pass over since we had nothing for closed session. Agenda item ten. By my determination, we have reached the end of our agenda, and we are adjourned at 9.08 p.m. Thank you very much. And see everyone bright.